Hello, it's Dr. Macho for Heart and Lungs Focused Ultrasound. In the next image, I want to show you such a pulmonary venous flow signal. You have the systolic flow denoted with S, you have the diastolic flow denoted with D and this AR time, and this is a normal situation. You have a normal systolic flow, a normal diastolic flow, it's not one, so the diastolic flow is a little bit smaller than the systolic flow. This was a TE study, so this is not a TTE signal. So in TE, you can very often nicely delineate those signals. To compare this with a pathological example, on the left-hand side, you have the normal variant. You see nicely the AR time, the systolic and the diastolic flow. And on the right-hand side in the slide, you see that there is a flow reversal in severe mitral regurgitation. You have this signal, again, the systolic signal, which is way smaller than the diastolic signal which denotes that it is pathological and you have this flow reversal, the systolic flow reversal in severe mitral regurgitation in between the S and the D wave. Those are all signals from transesophageal echo where you can mostly get a way better image compared to the transthoracic approach. To move on, we can also do a scoring for heart failure with preserved ejection fraction where diastolic dysfunction plays an essential role. There are two scores I want to mention, the HEF, 2 pef score, the H2FPEF score and the HFA PEF score is the score you see on the right hand side. In the image there are major criteria and minor criteria. This is a two-step approach in diastolic dysfunction. You can check up this scientific paper, it's really a nice read. And in this step two you see that you have some functional criteria, some morphological criteria, also biomarkers are included in sinus rhythm and in atrial fibrillation and you have the norm values. Denote that the minor criteria also include the global longitudinal strain already. The major criteria in functional assessment are the septal E prime, the lateral E prime, the average E to E prime, which is here above or 15 or the TR velocity. So it's assessment of heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. You have one major criteria which equals two points. And if you add the morphological criteria, for example, the LAVI, so the left atrial volumetric index above 34 milliliters per square meter, which is also essential for assessing diastolic dysfunction. You can see that these are again uh, major criteria for the diagnosis of heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. And then you would need an elevated biomarker, so the anti-pro-BMP or the BMP above certain levels to distinguish is it really heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. If you, for example, do not have elevated biomarkers, you would need a diastolic stress test or invasive hemodynamic measurements. Now, if you perform this score, you see that the functional and morphological parts play a very important role. So echocardiography is essential in diagnosing heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. Now there was the term diastolic stress test. Diastolic stress testing is like the left ventricular stress testing. You can check out also the literature here, but the most important thing is that you keep in mind that during the stress test, the E to E prime ratio has to be elevated above 14 and the TR velocity has to be above 2.8 meters per second during the stress test. Also, the hand grip stress test is quite nice when you see the E to E prime ratio is rising and the TR is rising that points you towards that there's really a diastolic problem, so possibly a heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. If you combine those two measurements, the E to E prime and the TR velocity, the sensitivity and the specificity is not that bad. If you have only one measurement possible, so for example, only the E to E prime, it's actually not that good. So keep diastolic stress testing in mind. If you cannot perform it, an invasive measurement would be more appropriate. Another measurement which is rather difficult to do but important and you can use it for several formulas is the color M-mode flow propagation. You can see it quite nicely over here. You have the mitral valve plane and you have to measure from the mitral valve plane in color M-mode 4 cm distally into the LV. Above 50 cm per second is considered normal. So if it's below 50 centimeters per second, there might be elevated filling pressures. As mentioned in the previous lecture, the E2, the velocity propagation, can distinguish or calculate the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. Keep in mind that this measurement also has several pitfalls and it's sometimes very difficult to delineate the mitral valve inflow or also the mitral valve planes. 
To continue with the summary, we already said that all the parameters have several limitations. In some situations, some measurements cannot be applied. All the formulas I presented to you do have limitations, but still there is this term of the indeterminate. In the next video, we will talk more in detail about these specific situations in diastolic dysfunction.